Meet 36-year-old Kate Philp, a Sheffield shopping addict whose spending has gone through the roof. Just has a really nice leather jacket that I wouldn't mind buying. And I like them trousers and I like that cut. <laughs> In just two years, she's clocked up credit card debts of £27,000. Almost double her £14,000 take-home salary as an NHS office manager. It's like an adrenaline rush. I love it. I absolutely love it. I'm full of it when I'm shopping. It's my favourite thing to do. Kate's on the fast track to bankruptcy. She's not even enjoying the ride. I've got absolutely nothing to show for all this debt, and that is, it's really frightening. I'm 36, and I just can't carry on like this. But she does. Kate just can't stop spending. Shopping makes me feel fantastic. I love it, absolutely love it. She shops every day, and she shops every minute of every day if she could. Look at them. <laughs> they are gorgeous. They are divine. She needs some professional help. Lifestyle expert Jay Hunt and psychological coach Benjamin Fry have just four weeks to slam the brakes on Kate's shopping. I'm not going to lie to you, it's a tough budget. I mean, this is the reality of paying back £27,000. There's something trying to come out of you and you strangle it with shopping. But prizing her away from the tills won't be easy. Things are really bad, really out of control. If I don't do something now, it'll be disastrous. Kate is a seasoned spenderholic. This isn't the first time she's fallen headfirst in debt. Two years ago, she separated from her husband, Chris, owing a staggering £30,000 on her credit card. Chris didn't know to what extent I was in regarding the debt when we split up. I think it played a massive part in the marriage breakdown. I felt a bit cheated, because I don't think I could have done the same to her. If you don't tell the person close to you that something's going on, that, then, then it's almost lying by default. She kept all the financial records away from me, so I had no idea what Kate's debts were. Kate split with Chris and started renting. Selling the house helped wipe out all her debts bar £1,000. But in the two years since, she's right back where she started with £27,000 worth of debt. Here we are, sort of two years later, and I'm just back to square one in the space of two years. And I can't believe I've let myself get back in this mess. It's make or break time, I just don't know I've got no house to sell this time. I've got nothing to bail me out. Experts Jay Hunt and Benjamin Fry have persuaded Kate to leave home for the morning so they can hunt for clues which might explain why she's so much in debt. Jay will look for where the money's actually going and Benjamin will search for psychological motives behind Kate's spending. I'm sure they're going to discover that I am a compulsive shopper, an impulsive, um, which I suppose are two bad things to be married together. Um, I'm sure that's what they're going to find, and they're going to find that I've got far more stuff than I need. Aha, very neat kitchen. Yeah. Ooh, let's have a poke in their fridge. It doesn't feel like there's been a lot of cooking in it, has it? No, I know. Well, there's not many meals in there or many things to sort of cook with, apart from eggs. There's no sort of, like, basic... It's very snacky, isn't it? Yeah. I think I probably eat out two or three times a week. Um, and then there's weekends, so often there's takeaways at weekends. Nice takeaway menus. You're making me hungry already. I know. Have a look at this, Jay. Ah, oh, now you're talking. <laughs> I don't think anybody in this house does much cooking. I can't cook to save my life. Well, I'm saying I can't cook. I'm sure I could cook if I put my mind to it. It's just chocolates and crisps and cereals. This is like what I used to live off as a student. Yeah, it is a bit like immediate sort of food. It's not very heavily used. Jay and Benjamin head upstairs and soon realise that Kate and Budget are not well acquainted. Aha. Uh -huh. Girly that? stuff. Let's have a look in here. Oh, look at all of this. I've got a large collection of makeup. I mean, mo a lot of my money must have gone on that. Is this normal? Dior, Mac, Clinique. Your, look, this has still got the paper in. 
it's hardly been used. I mean, there's hundreds of pounds worth of stuff in yeah. here. I don't really use it. It's like, oh yeah, that'll be great when I go out. I can try this and I can do this. And that'll go with this top. And I just don't go out. I like this. Shopaholic, licence to spend. <sighs> Sort of a joke, but yeah, but not know, really. It's not really if we're here, is it? No. Look at all this down here. Loads of shoes. Shoes in boxes. Up. Oh look, shoes the same shoes in two colours, and she's never really worn them Those in exactly either the colour. Oh my god, bags with bags. Absolutely stuffed. Lulu Guinness. That's not cheap. Even I know that. Do you have one of these at home, Jane? Tell you what. The Fashion Catastrophe Fund box should be a damn sight bigger than that, yeah. given the debt she's got. It's like, it's all a bit of a joke. It's a bit of a joke, but it isn't. But it isn't a joke, is it? Let's have a look in here. They've all got labels on. There's lots of things in my wardrobe that I've never worn, and they're just there collecting dust. Label, labels. <laughs> it's the wardrobe of labels. It's like, she just can't help herself. It's really funny, because... They've all got different sizes. I've got 16, 18, 20, 22. Over the past couple of years, I'd say I must have put two or three stone on. Um, and that's making me feel pretty miserable. It's the wardrobe of somebody who has fluctuating weight and also who, I would predict, buys things thinking, oh, I'll, if I buy that, I'll slim to get into it. Look at all of these photographs. Oh, so that's this, her? Yeah, that's her. And then that's her more recently. And then there's one of her now. Down in the dining room, the clues are coming thick and fast. Aha! What is that? It's half full of stuff. She's either throwing it or maybe it's going to the charity shop. But that's quite a nice jacket. leather jacket. Weird. And as for Kate's financial records... Found them. Oh, look, loads of stuff in What's there. That? Wow. Wow! Dorothy Perkins next, Marks and Spencer. Look at this. Ravel shoes, Debenhams, Debenhams, shoes, Debenhams, Debenhams, Evans. So she's taking oh. credit cards and just running them to their limit. Yeah, her balance is up to 5,000. Rotating credit limits on different cards. I think there's a whole load of stuff going on here, so I think we should take the whole lot. I think the plot may thicken. Statements in hand, Jay and Benjamin slip away to do some research. Since splitting from her husband, shopping has become Kate's number one love. Every lunchtime and every Saturday, she's feeding her passion and fueling her debt. When the mood takes her, her eyes will just light up, saying, I've got to spend something today, I've got to spend something today, no matter what. And half of the time, I don't really need the things, or if I think about it, really want them. One third of the clothes and makeup Kate buys ends up being given away or thrown away. I often have a bit of a sort out every so often, especially with the makeup. Take that into work for people. Half my makeup bags, you know, full, about half of it is full of her stuff, um, and it's it's hard to say no sometimes. I often fill charity bags with clothes. Sometimes things that I've never worn, I just send it off. But shoes, all sorts, I often throw in charity bags and declutter. And I feel better for a while and I think, right, that's it, no more now. And then I just carry on and so the cycle goes on. It's a classic case for our experts. They've got just four weeks to reverse Kate's lifetime of financial mismanagement. <laughs> Sorting out Kate's finances will mean teaching her some tough lessons. Benjamin and Jay have identified her two worst areas of spending. They're going round to her house for a graphic illustration. Hi. Kate. Hello, Kate. Hi. Hello. I'm oh, all right, thank nice you. To nice you. to meet Benjamin. you. Nice to meet you. Benjamin. Hiya. Now. Come on out. <laughs> I've got something to show you here. Come here with me. What do you think this is all about? Oh, my God. <laughs> Here we have for you 12 big wheelie bins. Right. To represent every month of the year. Mm -hmm. And in each one is stuffed to the lid with stuff that you throw away every month. And you don't just throw away rubbish either. Actually, you throw away some really nice bits and pieces. Now, we've added this up. 
And we come to a figure for each month of four hundred and sixty-six pounds. Four hundred and sixty-six pounds. Quite a lot. Four hundred and sixty-six pounds every month, which, when you add it all up, comes to. £5,592, which, just come here, looks like... Oh, my God. ..stuck in a bin. I can't believe that. That is the money that you are chucking away in the bin every year. You're literally throwing money down the drain. So, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to ask the bin man to take this money away and incinerate it to show you exactly what you do every year with your unwanted purchases. If that's all right with you, come and take out my trash. She doesn't believe us. Throw it's away, going. No. Just throw away. Bye, money. Bye, money. But the lesson's not over yet. Oh, God. <laughs> Jay and Benjamin have got another trick up their sleeve. Very nice. Kate's second worst indulgence is eating out and getting takeaways. Waiter? Oh. <laughs> now, do you know how many waiters and waitresses are here today? No. OK, well, there's 22 here, which represents the 22 times every single month that you eat out. Did you know it was that much? No. Well, that much amounts to, let me tell you, £250 every month on your eating out bill or £3,000 a year. Oh, that's disgusting. <laughs> How much money did you think you spent every month on eating out? Probably £100 a month at the most. Oh, really? Yeah. Does it upset you to see the amount of money to be confronted with it? Very much so. Does I can't believe. You? Yeah, it worries me. Feel yeah. ready to change? Yeah. Even if it's difficult? Yeah, even if it's difficult. Yeah. yeah. To live within her means and start clearing her mountainous debt, Kate yeah. needs to slash her spending to the absolute minimum. So Benjamin and Jay set a budget which yeah. does just that. Do you know how much money you get through in an average week? £100. £100 a week. You think you spend £100 a week? 150 150 a week. 150 yeah. a week. And this is on non-essential spending? Yeah. Like, not like your rent? Yeah. OK. Well, we've been through your statements and had a look, and you might be interested to know that you get through a rather whopping £716 every single week. Oh. I can't believe that. I just cannot believe that. What you're actually doing at the moment is spending more than double what you're bringing in. Oh Are you a bit shocked? Very shocked. Yeah. Very shocked. How does I mean, it make you feel? Sick. Does yeah. it? Yeah, sick. I feel Scared. sick. Yeah. Well, based on the fact that you thought you were spending £100 a week, what do you think you can get away with for seven days? Fifty. Fifty pounds. So if I was to say we reckoned that 40 quid would test you, would you be up for giving that a go? Yeah, definitely. Yeah? Definitely, yeah. Well, yeah. Good. So you're yep. very, very positive about yeah. giving it a go? Yeah, definitely. It's drastic measures need to be done. OK. Especially after I've seen that. I really get the sense that this is a time for no more excuses, especially as she's somebody who's had a debt, paid it off, and then rather frighteningly, she's back where she's begun yet again. Kate's faced the shocking truth. Now it's time to pull the plug on her high voltage spending. It's day one of cold turkey, and she's off to a good start. Let's have a look now. What have we got in here? Dining out and ordering in takes a huge bite out of Kate's earnings. At a cost of £3,000 a year, tasty treats are definitely off the menu. I'm mm, going to have to do a shop. Better make a list, otherwise I'll never remember what to get. 
I'm so not used to this. Bolstered by a shopping list, Kate's braving the virgin territory of her local supermarket. But this is a trolley dash with a difference. Today, I don't want to be spending any more than 20, 25 pounds at the most. And I don't think it's going to be very easy. I've absolutely never, ever had to do anything like this before. I've never had to walk around the supermarket and actually think about what I'm buying. Three for three pounds. I absolutely love mango. Normally I'd buy something like this, but one pound 56 on my budget. No, not this week. They're on offer. <laughs> How sad is this? <laughs> I'm adding this up, you see. No, I think I'm going to get a large loaf. I can always freeze some. <laughs> All part of my new organised lifestyle. I'm quite impressed in myself. <laughs> so 13.78 then, please. Well, that's fantastic. I think this is a job well done. <laughs> Success. Kate's managed to get her weekly food bill down to £13.78. That's £90 less than usual. Thank you, thanks. For today, the piggy bank can breathe a sigh of relief. At £40, I mean, I could spend £40 in an hour. Every single thing that I'm buying, I'm making sure that I add it up so that I know that I'm not going over budget. So it's getting a little bit obsessive, actually. So... Uh, I suppose that's a good thing in a way. You never know, I might end up a saver-holic. Day two and Kate's still going strong. A confirmed shopaholic, lunchtime would usually be reserved for the shopping mall. But this week she's giving it a wide berth and getting her kicks at the flick of a page. Come the evening and Kate's resolve holds fast. Instead of late night shopping, she decides to opt for a late night in with the ironing. Not very happy about that because I absolutely hate it. It's a double whammy. She's spending nothing in the shops and she's saving cash at home. Because normally I would pay someone to do my ironing, but this week but my budget can't take it being on cold turkey. So I've got to do it myself. <laughs> Well, I can go to the shops, but I'm not going to go because it's going to just make me want to buy and I think I'm better off staying away. And I know that probably sounds mad, but because for some people they've got so many hobbies and things that they won't think shopping's a chore to some people, whereas to me, it's something that makes me happy. Kate's now five days into cold turkey and so far has managed to resist temptation. Today's Saturday, and she's walking straight into the lion's den, the local shopping precinct. But Kate's showing real initiative. Instead of buying clothes, she's looking to return some. I've been rooting through my clothes at home, found a couple of things that um, I bought and don't really want, don't really like, if I'm being honest. I'm going to do something that's very alien to me. I'm going to go in there and get it refunded onto my credit card. So here goes. Done it. Refund. I did see a couple of things, I must admit, that I would have loved to have swapped it for, but no, I've done it. I've come out. I've done something that I never usually do, so that's good. It's the last day of cold turkey, and Kate's determined to come in under budget. With only £5.93 left of the original £40 and the cupboard scraped bare, the cavalry arrive in the shape of sympathetic friends and a free takeaway. This is the first takeaway I've had this week. That's, that's good for me, isn't it? I mean, usually I'm eating out all over. Bit miserable that I've not been to the shops though. But you, you know, didn't like, Did sort of think about a shopping trip at one point and then sort of thought against it. Lunchtime's not the same. Oh, I've got to stay in office because no one else will go out with me and, and spend. <laughs> well, they might go out with they won't spend. Yeah, true. <laughs> and that's no fun. <laughs> <laughs> Kate sailed through cold turkey with flying colours. Mm -hmm. 
by eating in and steering clear of shops, she spent just £34.7p of the £40 doled out at the start of the week. Thank you. But the challenge of a long-term budget is a scary prospect. I feel pleased that I've done it, pleased that I stuck to budget. I definitely am going to need some help, though, if it's going to be a continued thing, because without some help and assistance, I won't carry it on. I know I won't. If Kate's to break the cycle of spending, it's vital she understands what's turning the wheels. I don't know what goes through my mind when I buy these things, other than I want them. There's no thinking about it. Psychological coach Benjamin Fry has arranged to meet Kate to take a closer look at what's behind this constant craving. I think it's important to understand that overspending isn't really about greed. It's not about acquiring stuff. It's actually about a cry for help. Often there's an underlying emotional reason for the spending. The spending itself is like the tip of an iceberg. My job is to get under the waterline and find the rest of the iceberg. Why don't you just tell me a bit about what's been going wrong and if you have an idea why? I just do everything sort of opposite to what I should do. What would you put under the umbrella of everything? Eating, mm -hmm. spending, definitely. And I don't understand, th this is why this is going to be so helpful to me because I don't understand why, you know, it's just like a a bit like a self-destruct thing. I'm out of control. Yeah. It's like, well, I should, shouldn't be doing this, but I am. A soddic sort of attitude. So you do have the thought, I shouldn't do this. You feel rebellious. Yeah, rebellious, that's exactly it. Yeah, mm -hmm. rebellious. Kate believes that it was during the course of her relationship with husband Chris that her spending and eating first slipped out of control. With two children from a previous marriage, Chris was unwilling to start a new family. There's something trying to come out of you and you strangle it with food. You strangle it with shopping. It's, it's like as if, because I can't have what I really want, I have other things instead. Right. So it's making up for not being a mother, possibly. If I said to you I had a crystal ball and I knew you would never be a mother, how would you react? I'd be devastated. Because mm. it's something I've always wanted. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Fine. Kate connects her overspending to Chris's reluctance to have more children. But Benjamin suspects that the roots of her addiction run deeper. Here's the interesting thing. Two years ago, you took a bold step to claim for you something you've always wanted that you were afraid you were running out of time to have, which is children. Since then, you've sabotaged yourself more heavily than ever before. Yeah. There's Kate who says, hold on. That's enough of you, what about me? Yeah. And then there's this other side of Kate that says, Excuse me, you're not getting away with that. I'm going to drag you down till you go back, hiding under your rock. Mm. It suggests there's something about you that perhaps believes you're doomed, even. Is that true? Mm. I sort of feel like I don't deserve to be happy. You don't believe it? I don't know why I don't believe it. Would you say that you're prone to depression? Yeah. Would you say that you're often depressed? Yeah. I don't sort of know what for. There you go. Don't be good to yourself, you don't deserve it. Benjamin thinks it's probably depression that's triggering Kate's spending, but can't place where it comes from. How long have you felt like that for? I can't remember because I can't remember feeling normal. Forever. You felt guilty forever. 
I can't remember feeling, I can't remember a time when I didn't, when I woke up and thought, I'm happy or I'm okay today. Mm. I think we need to do something about the source of your guilt. Might be something that we think about starting the process, introducing you to understanding it mm -hmm. and introducing you to thinking about what you can do about it. But I promise we'll take it easy. Because it's, you know, it's not easy. Kate seems to believe that the source of her depression is her husband Chris's refusal to start a family with her. I'm not so sure. I think that maybe Kate was depressed even as a small child. The trouble is at the moment, I don't know what the source of that depression is. And I really need to find out if I'm going to be able to help her. It was really tough even though I expected it to be, because the, there would have been no point otherwise. It would have been quite easy to say, to stop, but I had to carry on for me because it's, this is what I need to unlock. Uncovering why helps with this. Um, if you've got a reason, you can understand why you do something. It's not such a big, massive issue. It was difficult, really difficult but it was something that I needed to do. With Benjamin beginning to make headway in helping Kate trace the source of her addiction, it's time for Jay to draw up a realistic financial plan for the long-term future. Jay tries to sugar the pill with a tantalising glimpse of what a debt-free existence could mean. Now, come and have a look in here. This is the show flat, and it's a two-bed apartment, the sort of thing that is really aimed at people like you. Have a look at the master bedroom. God, this is gorgeous. What do you think about that? Absolutely gorgeous. I want to move in. <laughs> oh, this is a lovely size as well. Mm. Jay's hoping that the flat will give Kate the extra motivation to settle her finances, quit renting, and get back on the property ladder. What I want you to do is to really think about this flat every time you're tempted by something very much smaller. Because if you hadn't built up that debt, you could be living somewhere like this. Yeah. Now, we've been through everything. I'm not going to lie to you, it's a tough budget. This is where it's really going to start hitting you. Clothes and shoes, you've been spending £500 mm. a month. Now, we've cut that down to £30, and I think that's going to be really hard for you, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. It's going to be a really difficult area. Going out and eating out, at the moment, you're spending £250. Now, this is going to scare you, because that's in at zero. <laughs> Beauty products and makeup, another big area that you like spending in, we're cutting that right back to £10. <laughs> That's what you have been spending, 2,415, and we've cut it back to 1,160. It's not an easy budget to stick to, is it? Definitely not. With half her monthly income set aside for credit card repayments, so Kate will be living on a shoestring. What it's going to take is living on this budget for 10 years. I mean, this is the reality of paying back £27,000. Yep. But what I think is good about it is that it is doable. If you could earn £500 extra a month, your debt would be consolidated in five years. I can't believe it, and I can't... But, well, I can now that we know what I was spending. Yeah. But I can't but understand how quickly I could have done mm. it again. But I tell you, Kate, I think you can do this. I can't believe I've got myself in this mess again. But anyway, can't dwell on that now. I've got no, to, I've got we're to moving forward. forward. Yeah. I think delivering Kate's budget has been a big, big shock to her. I think she's really willing to try, but I do get a sense that there was a sort of small part of her that was praying that Benjamin and I were going to be magicians and have an answer that she just hadn't thought of and make everything OK. And what today's made her realise is that whilst we're here with her, we're facilitators and can start her on her first bit of her journey. But she's the one that's going to have to do a lot of hard work because getting out of debt when your debt is £27,000 is very, very hard indeed.
Oh, I could have cried because well, I did cry actually afterwards, locked myself in the loo. I'm just going to be so miserable. It's going to be a miserable existence. It's not going to be living. It's not going to be having fun or, well, living. It's just going to be going to work and just to try and pay things off and existing. And it's just awful, an awful prospect. Afraid that Kate lacks the emotional strength to sustain her rigid budget, Jay meets with Benjamin. I mean, however I put it and whatever order I put it in, there's no disguising the fact that Kate is going to have to stick to a very, very strict budget to get this under control. There is no give anywhere because it's so serious how her situation is. And consciously, she seems very keen. My only worry is that we need to find a way where she really understands why this has happened so she can stick to it. In my first consultation with her, we did discover a lot of themes of depression and mm. guilt. Oddly enough, there's actually no, nothing I can really fix this on in her past. And I'm a bit stumped actually, because it is a bit of a riddle. She knows who she is and how she is, she just doesn't know why. We don't have that yet. I just think if she doesn't understand it, what's going to happen sooner or later is she's going to go, you know what, this is too difficult, and she's going to end up worse off than she's ever been. To give Kate a fighting chance of breaking free and breaking even, Benjamin returns to Sheffield for some urgent detective work. He believes that depression is the likeliest emotional trigger for her addiction. Finding its source is proving hard to pin down. Something's missing from the story. From our first meeting, I thought maybe I can come and I can ask some people some questions. Unfortunately, um, your mother's recently been in hospital. Although she's out now, she's fine. She's not really up to this sort of thing. And nobody in your family really feels able to help me. So I've had to think hard about what to do. And actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use you as my tool okay. to help me to unlock this riddle. Part of the riddle is where do we start? Where do we look? What questions do we ask? Who do we talk to? Yeah. And I've got a plan today that will help you to tell me what that should all be. OK. Kate, we've arrived. We're at the threshold of a country house maze, which I'm using as a metaphor for the mystery we're trying to unravel. OK. What I've done is, inside this maze, I've placed at various points some boxes. Inside each box is a question. And what we're going to do is you're going to navigate the maze and you're going to collect questions. You're trying to find me in the middle of the maze because what you're trying to do is get to the centre of your own issues. Okay. If you never find me, then it's clear that you really don't want to get to the bottom of this, <laughs> which is also fine. I'll find you. Okay. <laughs> For Benjamin, Kate's journey through the maze symbolises her confused state of mind. The questions she'll find along the way are designed to get her thinking deeper. Me. Mm -hmm. Hurrah! You made it! Fantastic! Shall we go through these? Oh. You're obviously anxious too. Yep. OK. Did someone die? Yeah. OK. Are there secrets? Did Mum want me? Mum and Dad, I need to ask. Who was depressed? Now, you feel that these are questions you need to ask your mother and father, do you? Yeah. I think they'd be the best people to talk to. Yeah. Do I know the truth? And who is hiding what? At this point in your journey, we have to ask some questions, mm -hmm. simply because there's something missing here. And I'm getting the impression from you that you also feel it's time to ask some questions. Yeah, I think it's time. I need to get to the bottom of things. 
So you're going to have to take these, if you feel comfortable, to your mum and dad, if you feel that's the right thing. Yeah. And that's going to be my homework for you. OK. And I am going to come back and see you again. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to come and you're going to tell me what happened, what you discovered, if anything, okay. and how you feel about it. All right. All right? Yeah, that's fine. OK. OK. Let's get out of here. Yes, good idea. You know the way? <laughs> I really don't know what the answers will be to these questions. It may be that there are no answers. I hope that what will happen is that this will take Kate closer to the centre of her own psychological riddle and that she can get some sense of what went on in the past and how it affected her to make her the way she is in the present. I'm glad I've embarked on this journey, although part of me sometimes thinks, what have you done? My mum and dad are quite private people and I'm not sure I'm looking forward to this. Some of the questions I was thinking, oh God, you know, do I really have to ask these? But I'm getting there and it's going to be a long windy path, but I'm sure I will get there in the end. Kate's nearly three weeks into her retail therapy. While she waits for the right moment to speak to her parents, the reality of life on the harsh new budget has focused her thoughts on earning more money. She's in search of a part-time job. I'm trying to take on some extra work, perhaps some twilight typing for one of the big firms of solicitors in Sheffield, or even some catering work. I think I'm doing quite well with the budget this week. No cards, no plastic. The only things that are in here are loyalty cards that I can get points on. Everything else is cash, pure cash. So the motto is at the moment, and more money in, and as soon as possible. Despite Kate's best intentions, sticking clear of shops is proving a strain. I'd normally take my car to a valley at the local shopping precinct, and while I was inside shopping, my car would be getting cleaned. But today, I'm doing it myself because if I decided to go and do the usual thing, it would cost me at least £10. I'd obviously rather be shopping, but because that's not an option anymore, car cleaning's gonna have to be one of the things that fills my time and stops me shopping. I have gone through a range of emotions and a lot of them positive, but a lot of them negative as well. I felt that, I thought, is this it then? Is this it for the rest of my life? Is this what I'm gonna have to do? Uh, count every penny. This is it, it's just not worth it. It's, it's like, oh, you know, what sort of miserable life is this gonna be? Concerned that Kate's struggling, Jay sent round a box of goodies to perk her up. Dear Kate, because I know you'll be tempted to go shopping, here's something to help you when you feel the need. A lucky dip. Ooh. Inside is the untouched and forgotten makeup from Kate's bedroom drawers. Aha, a good one to open. My nice Chanel palette. <laughs> so it's like shopping and getting that little, that fix, that actual excitement of buying something, but not spending any money because it's mine anyway. With Kate holding back on meeting her parents, Jay presses on with spending cuts. Tackling the key area of clothes and makeup. Well, on your new budget, we're recommending £30 a month for clothes and £10 a month for beauty products. But I don't think it stops you shopping at all. But what it is going to make you do is absolutely focus for the first time on what you need rather than just grabbing stuff. Because I think what you're shopping for is confidence. And so there's a kind of mythological fantasy item somewhere out there that if you buy it, is going to make you feel fantastic and is going to do all these jobs for you. And of course, you never find it. And so the wardrobe ends up more and more stocked with all of these things that seem like they're the ideal thing when you're in the shop. And then when you've got them home, it's back to reality and nothing ever works. Would that be a fair summing up? I think you've hit the nail on the head there, exactly. What you've just said just rings true with me totally. I think we should get going and look at some stuff that suits you. Sounds like you up idea. for that? Yeah, definitely. So, Kate, what I've done is pulled in some stuff from one of the personal shoppers, 
and I want you to start looking at the window displays and looking at the mannequins in the shops because somebody in that shop would have spent quite a lot of time and effort into putting a whole outfit together on that display. Okay. And that's what we've got to get you thinking. How can I use my money really effectively to get more than one look out of one thing? Yeah. The other things I want you to start doing is to start getting rid of some of the stuff that you no longer wear that's in your wardrobe. So if there's anything that doesn't fit you today, then it's going. So let's get started then. Kate normally shuns changing rooms, preferring to scoop up armfuls of items to try on at home. I don't like trying things on in changing rooms with the horrible lights and the twiglets that are a size six in the next, <laughs> next uh, cubicle. This is a new experience. I like the way you move. Hmm, quite like this outfit. <laughs> You're even smiling, you see it yourself. <laughs> I'd never dream of buying this. What would have put you off? Colour. The trick is, you've got a dark colour hiding the bit you really don't like, and then you've got colour up here. Flattering items are the way to go, not oversized ones. <laughs> wow, look at you in a dress. A dress. <laughs> <laughs> I always think dresses are for no, nobody bigger than a size 12. Till I'm that size, I will never wear a dress. <laughs> okay. Well, one of the reasons why it's maybe worth us rethinking dresses is because this dress is actually £40. You only got to buy one item. Having shown Kate that she can turn a corner and turn heads, Jay proceeds to tackle her second problem area makeup. So is it the same thing that happens to you when you go out shopping for cosmetics? It's the whole fantasy product that's going to make you look beautiful, make you feel fantastic, all the rest of it. That's exactly it. And then what happens when it doesn't work? It just gets left in the drawer and it never gets used again. So what we're going to do now is we're going to use high street products only and get you to stand in front of the mirror and look at Kate, the reality of today, and hopefully give you a bit of a confidence boost, yeah? OK. All right. Kate usually spends a giddy £200 a month on top brand cosmetics. Jay's new budget, however, only allows for £10. She'll have to tighten up when doling out. So, Kate, open your eyes, have a look at this look. Ooh! What do you think of my that? My word! I like that. You like very that? Very different, yeah. I like my eyes and that lip gloss is gorgeous. It's very foxy. Yeah. Now, this is for you to keep your little essential kit and that entire lot came to £26.32p. and Which is less than I'd have usually spent on one item. This should last you at least a couple of months, if not three. So on £10 a month, you can still buy stuff to make you look great and you don't need to keep buying into all of these fancy products. Proof is in the pudding. Definitely. <laughs> yeah, it's lovely. You look great, I do, I like yeah. it. She readily admits that she is a fantasy shopper and I think now we can show her that there are other ways to shop rather than this sort of demented shopper desperately searching for this one thing that's going to give her confidence and make her feel fantastic that never materialises is a big breakthrough. What I am hoping is that the more Benjamin does with her and the more her confidence and self-esteem starts to build, it's going to make it much easier for her to stop wanting to go shopping for these items that she thinks are going to magically give her self-confidence overnight. It's now week four of Kate's financial makeover and she can no longer delay the trip to her parents. If she's going to claw her way out of debt, Kate needs to understand her depression, the likely trigger for so much debt. A bit nervous because it's obviously not the sort of thing we normally sit down and talk about, but I know I've got to do it, and I think it's going to help. So, I'm going to do it. Hey, Mum. Hey, Dad. Hi. I know it's not all about blame, but... My mum and dad were quite uh, sort of worried that it was something they might have done. I didn't really want them to, to feel like it were any of their fault. It wasn't an easy, easy thing to do. 
I'm glad I did it, but it was nice when it came to an end. Well, you don't have to eat it all. Thank you very Thank much. You. Kate's making progress on all fronts. She's carried out the groundwork for Benjamin's emotional investigation and she's holding fast to Jay's new budget, ditching restaurants and takeaways in favour of home cooking. How much do you think it costs then for me to make this? About £25, £30. £14.40. For two courses? Two courses for four of us. I must admit, I've noticed a big difference now. Mm -hmm. These last few weeks, everything you said now has got a budget attached to it. <laughs> oh my God, I'm turning into a budget bull. <laughs> Kate's not just saving money, she's earning more as well. I'm doing some extra typing work, being given it from a medical student. I'm being paid £7 an hour to do this, so that's quite good. And I'm, I'm estimating it's going to take me about nine hours in total. So that'll be £63. So if I um, do a good job on this, then you never know. I might get some more work from, you know, some more of the students, which will be great. I mean, I can just hammer it out and it'll be fantastic. But if she's to boost her chances of long-term success, Kate needs to unravel the tangled knots of her addiction. Enlightened by the family chat, Kate meets with Benjamin to see if he can pinpoint the source of her depression, the emotional engine driving her wayward spending. You've been to see your mum and dad, mm -hmm. that's right? Yeah. Since I saw you last? Yep. Um, why don't you just tell me what happened? OK. Well, I got my list of questions. The ones that um, there were a sort of definite answer to was, did anyone die? And my grandma died when I was sort of four and a half, five months old. Mm -hmm. And the other one that was quite um, interesting was, was anyone who was depressed? Mm -hmm. Well, a couple of things came out there. My mum's father, my granddad, who I had a lot to do with when I was little, yeah. had really severe bouts of depression. He'd had electric shock treatment. Really? Yeah, and he, they'd stabilised him. This is your mother's father? Yeah. And I said to my mum, would I have known that? Would I? And she said, well, you used to visit him with me. What age were you then? Three. Mm. Uh, my mum had been depressed the year before I was born. Really? She'd had a miscarriage. She'd been depressed and had mm. quite a, a bad sort of time uh, nerve-wise. She'd been on um, some tranquilizers, Librium. Librium. Yeah. But then when she found out she was pregnant with me, Mm -hmm. She came off everything. So she lost a baby a year before you. She was depressed for a year and on Librium, which is a very strong antidepressant, mm. then immediately comes off it going cold turkey, mm. which itself is a kind of chemical roller coaster. Yeah. Has you. May have been a bit up and down. Mm. Children at age are very perceptive. Yeah. And if they feel like somebody's ill, somebody's suffering, somebody's down, and a child can internalise a sense of responsibility. You know, there's a whole pattern here. Your mother was treated with Librium for depression mm -hmm. and her father was treated with electric shock therapy. These are two pretty serious interventions. Mm -hmm. um, and there is a theory that depression, or the susceptibility to depression, is certainly hereditary. Yeah. So I think, to me, this extra information is really locking the pieces of this puzzle together. Do you feel like that? Yeah, I do now, yeah. Having talked to you about it then, yeah, I can see what you're saying, I can mm. understand. I think what we've done is we've started a new way to look at your life. Um, and there are things that I hope you go on with. I feel a lot clearer. Mm -hmm. and I don't feel bogged down with emotion. Yeah, it's I, easier, isn't it? Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, it's less tiring. And so in a way you're free. Well, we now have some new information, and I think this really fleshes out Kate's story. What's clear to me is that now, looking back on it, the spending was just the tip of the iceberg, and she was using that behaviour as medication to treat her underlying sense of depression and guilt. Now we can see where that comes from, 
And I think this gives Kate the opportunity to understand herself better. By understanding it, she gets an opportunity to treat it. And if she does so, I think the spending will automatically fall away as a problem in her life. Now that I know why I did what I did, um, now that Benjamin's highlighted to me what the patterns and sort of how the how the pieces of the jigsaw were fitting into place, um, I don't feel I feel a lot more relaxed. I was constantly guilty, and it's just such a wasteful emotion, tiring, pointless, <laughs> and I just feel so much better. I know I'd go from rags to return. It's four weeks since Kate embarked on her financial makeover and she's in sound shape. With a better understanding of the motives behind her urge to spend, she's tackling her addiction head on. Today she's in town shopping for clothes and adopting a whole new mindset. I'm looking for an outfit that will do a, a sort of a dual purpose really for interview for one of my extra jobs that I'm trying to get in to get some more money, but also for a wedding, so I need something that'll be versatile. Right, so that's £55. This one's 28 The trousers are 25 I'm not very good at adding up. I'm not used to adding up, that's why. <laughs> so that's £108 in total. That's this month's budget, next month's budget. And I've got a top to bring back that's about £30, so near enough covers it. I think it'd be worth it, actually. I never normally try things on, so this is going to be strange in itself. I like it. I really like it. <laughs> and I can afford it. Yes. Kate's not just hell-bent on saving, she's making a big push to raise her income. She's applied for a job at an estate agent and has been called in for an interview. I've dressed up in my new outfit. I'm going to go in there and give it my best shot and see if I can get myself an extra job and earn some extra money so that I can get these debts paid off a bit quicker. With shopping no longer the be-all and spend-all of her life, Kate's spare time is taking some unusual twists and turns. Shimmy, one, two, three, forward, left, six. It feels a bit sad, really, to think that my only sort of passion was shopping, but it's true. But now, I think I'm going to be OK. I'm going to fill that void. OK, into your mambo. And one, two, three. That was fantastic. I have had so much fun. I can't tell you. I'm also thinking of joining belly dancing classes, so... You know, I might as well put this belly to some use. <laughs> I'm looking at things differently. I'm, I'm looking at things more realistically. I definitely think I've turned a corner. Four weeks ago, 36-year-old Kate Philp's spending was wild and unleashed. At £27,000, her debts were sky high, and Kate had a stark choice. Either change her ways or face financial ruin. Since then, lifestyle expert Jay Hunt has lent practical tips to tame her spending, while psychological coach Benjamin Fry has shed light on the emotional roots of her addiction. To mark the end of Kate's financial overhaul, Jay and Benjamin are meeting her for a final catch-up. Kate, we've got to the end of this process. Are you pleased? It's done me good. It's done me a lot of good. Yeah. So... I'm glad I've done it. I am really glad. And at the beginning, I thought, oh, no, I wonder whether she thinks that we're magicians and we've got a magic answer that actually you hadn't thought of. And there is a moment in the process where you suddenly think, I've got to do this. One stinker of a budget, that, wasn't yeah. it? You know, it'd have been quite easy just to go, no, I can't do this. But as tough as the budget was, I think you also found some of the emotional work quite hard, didn't you? I did, very much so, yeah. So the work that we've done has really helped me. Yeah. I feel so much more relaxed now. It's done me all good. Excellent. And what have your friends noticed about you? What do they say? They're really impressed. They can't believe it. I'm saying things like um, about things, whether, well, I'll have to see if I can manage it out of my budget and things. And they're all <laughs> like, what? 
Is this you? Uh, what budget? I, I, I said, I'm, am I going to become a budget bore? <laughs> Whoever thought budget would be a word in my vocabulary. Uh, and how do you cope on those days where you just think, oh, God, I need to pick me up or I want to go to the shops or I want to do that? What is it now that stops you in your head? It's kicking in that I don't need these things. Right. It's really registered that these things aren't going to make me feel better. You seem like a person who feels much less weighed down by yourself. Yeah, I do. I've got a lot more clarity and I feel different. I feel better about me. And I think that's such a good starting point. Yeah. Yeah. You've started now and you've done the really hard stuff with us. Yeah. And I think you're definitely on the right road. Brilliant. Thank you. Well done, Kate. Thank you. Yeah, well done, Kate. Well done. Thank you, both. I'm definitely doing this. This is it. This is... I'm never, ever going back to how I was. If you'd like to come back in a year, <laughs> there'll be a very different me talking to you through this camera. Very different, I can guarantee it. I am not going back.